What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Good morning. It's Friday. It's a payday Friday. It is November 18th. Hopefully everyone is doing well. This is day two of my vacation. I'm excited. I'm happy. You could probably hear my dog barking in the background. Seems like he's happy and excited as well. Listen, this video we're going to talk about. Well, let's do a little recap of Swell. We got a massive, massive article that came out today talking about on-demand liquidity with an expansion going on over in Asia, which is absolutely huge. We're going to cover it, and we're actually going to talk about how big this really is. Folks, XRP still holding pretty strong, 38 cents, and it's currently down only 0.37% in the past 24 hours. We've been holding pretty steady at this 38 cent range for quite some time. Now, Bitcoin. It's another story. $16,684. It is currently up 0.02% in the past 24 hours. As Ethereum's coming in at about 1200 it's flat. Right? Total cryptocurrency market cap, $854 billion as the Bitcoin dominance is coming in at 37.49%. Now, folks, where do we go from here? You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we're going down that ten to $14,000 range is where I solely do believe we are going to visit for Bitcoin. That is when I will start rebuying into crypto positions, getting some new positions, adding to my XRP bags because I do think we are going to see one other major event within this market before we get those regulations in the institutions coming in. Time will tell, but I believe that is where we go. I believe XRP doesn't do anything too crazy until this Ripple versus SEC lawsuit is over. We're actually going to hear, uh, hear a clip with some, some facts that Stuart Alderati, Alderati stated. When he was at Swell, and he did bring up a very important port, a very important uh, point. I can't talk. Excuse me. He stated that he would have the lawsuit done, finalized, settled within an hour if the SEC would agree just to label XRP as not a security. But the SEC refuses to do so. So far at this point, we got what 14, 15, 16. I don't even know how many Amicus Bruce we got out there. The judge is fed up of, the, of their bull crap. We got Bill Hinman's speech. It's going to be very interesting moving ahead. Now, let's move into the news. We get this. Johnny Crypto put this out. It says, boom. First XRPL-based USD stablecoin has launched with an SEC qualified custodian. Here's the article. Check this out. According to a recent press release, Stably Corporation, which is based in Seattle, has announced the official launch of the multi-chain USD stablecoin Stably under the USDS ticker. The coin has been, been released on the XRP ledger, which is huge. This is the first ever USD peg stablecoin that has been launched in the XRP ledger, ledger as part of a cooperation between XRPL and Stably. The source also stated that the USDS is a regulatory compliant asset. Aside from XRPL, USDS has issued 11 other chains, including Ethereum, Stellar, VeChain, and Tezos. Folks, interesting, right? This has regular, this is the regulatory compliant asset is built on top of the XRP ledger. Clearly, the stably did not get a hold of Ripple, like, hey guys, do we have your permission to issue a stable coin on top of the ledger? No, of course they didn't. They don't have to. Because anyone can build out on top of the ledger. It is that simple. And then Wheezy comes out and he puts this: bye-bye shit coins, talk about 99% of them. Where have we heard this before? I believe Brad Gollinghouse has stated this time and time again. And I believe he started stating this and putting this 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 comment and this this statement into people's heads about five years ago, telling you that 99% of these tokens, these cryptos are going to disappear. Why they have no use case? They're shit coins. They're fake, right? I remember his story when I first got into crypto. He's talking about the Long Island Ice Tea coin, and Brad kind of chuckles and laughs at the story. He goes, "What do you need a token to measure out the amount of Long Island Ice Teas that are being poured out there?" You don't, folks. You don't listen to this. Right now, after this, uh, this FTA collapse, there is uh, the liquidity in the market is poor, and uh, it may be so that a number of these smaller coins will have to be delisted in an effort uh, to protect the consumers. Say that again. You said, what, what's going to have to happen? Uh, no, uh, if you see it, uh, the liquidity evaporating in the market, uh, I right. think what's going to happen is that the smaller currencies that are really illiquid. Uh, are facing uh, a risk of being delisted uh, from different exchanges uh, in an effort to protect the consumers. They face being delisted to protect the consumers. 
Folks, what are we seeing right now? It's simple. We're seeing liquidity leave the market. Why is liquidity leaving the market? Well, because people don't trust what is going on right now out there. That is why. So what is this guy saying? He's saying that these crap coins, these shit coins are going to have to go away. They're going to have to leave. Folks, we knew it was coming. You do not need 3,600 different cryptocurrencies. I think the number is even higher than that now. Only the ones that have true utility are going to last and are going to be around. XRP is one of them. XRP is being used currently around the world. And it has been proven time and time again that the XRP ledger is the fastest, cheapest, most efficient blockchain out there. And that this XRP token does what it says it can do and it can handle what it says it can do. It is lowering the remittance cost out there. People are sending money between different countries. They're not paying these crazy fees. They're saving all the way up to 90%. Like we've seen an example at a BTEC, a company out of Brazil. Pay attention, folks. And Mr. Whale puts this out. When Ripple destroys the SEC, not only is XRP the winner, but all of crypto 100% right. Why? Because when this lawsuit is over, what is going to happen? It's pretty simple. We are going to get regulations. The Howey test is going to go away. The Howey test will not be used for cryptocurrencies. They will usher in a new test that will be based upon everything Ripple has done since day one. You want to come out there and create a new token? We'll follow the steps that Ripple followed. And that's how you're going to be able to do it. But all these other currencies out there, these pump and dumps, this DeFi crap that's going on, most of it's going to disappear. And only the real players, the true players who are doing things legitimately are the ones telling you this. Pay attention who tells you that all these scripts are going to disappear. They're the people doing right. The people doing wrong are out there just making up a case. They put out their coin, you don't hear from them two months later. Right? And Ripple put this out. I'm a big proponent that we should be regulating activity, not technology. Very, very powerful statement right here. This was Jess Holgrave of Checkout.com. Drove into a discussion around all things UK crypto regulatory frameworks with Susan Freeman, day two at Ripple Swell. Listen to this. I'm a big proponent that we should be regulating activity, but not technology. Um, and uh, conversations around like, should we be regulating NFTs? I don't think are very productive for the industry. Um, I don't think they're productive for the wider perception because what ends up happening is that we have um, unclear messaging going out to the wider public around what this is and the potential benefits it has. And we end up kind of all tied up in thinking about this thing called crypto, which we're told is volatile and dangerous and bad for consumers. And we ignore actually some of the real benefits that it can bring on a B2B level for enterprise, for moving value around the world. We are ignoring a lot of those components because instead what happens? The SEC calls you in. They don't tell you what to do. How did you write? Instead, they say, ha, ah, got you good. We're going to sue you. And that's what they've been doing. Why are they so worried about NFTs right now? Get worried about the crypto markets and the exchanges so we don't have another debacle, another blowout like we did with FTX. How is Gary Gensler meeting with him? He met with Sam Baker Friedman of FTX. How did he meet with this guy and nothing came out of it? No regulations, absolutely nothing. And look what happened. What was the number? Nine billion? Was it nine billion that's lost? You gotta be kidding me. Tom Brady lost, I believe, 650 million. Tom Brady now has a class action lawsuit against him because he promoted that this exchange. You got to be kidding me. Unfreaking real real. And check this out, just it. Ripple is seeking an Ireland license and they plan for a European expansion. I wonder why. Why is Ripple keep expanding over in Europe? Perhaps because they have clarity on XRP. They're going to get this license. There's no doubt about it. they're going to get a license in Ireland. They're just going to keep expanding. We're going to get a new on-demand liquidity corridor. We're going to get a new central bank that's going to get involved. Folks. It is all lining up. And then we're going to move to this. Michael, my man Michael, put this out. Put this over to me this morning. Ripple's partner, Trangelo, expands in Asia's most developing countries. Folks, this is huge. We are seeing a Trangelo 
ODL takeover. They are taking over all of these Asian countries. Now they just upgraded their activities into Malaysia. Ripple partner Trangela lost a real-time cross-border payments, one of the fastest growing countries in the Asian region. Earlier, at the end of August, the company announced expansion to the UAE and the open of a payment corridor there. This time it's in Malaysia, but in a different way. So specifically the innovation that is 80% of cross-border payments processed by Changelo will take place in real time. The upgrade was needed due to the boom in real-time transactions in Malaysia. The breakthrough came thanks to Malaysian central payment system, PayNet, which had previously implemented the Duty Now real-time platform. As a result of these activities, real-time transactions have grown by 800% in three years and are expected to increase three and a half times more by 2025. Are you kidding me? Yes, we're talking XRP. Yes, we're talking on-demand liquidity. Let me give you a quick reminder of who Trangelo is and who they work with because WeChat, HyperWallet, they're all on here. Boss Money, Wise, Ripple owns 40% of this company. There are connections into China, Japan, Malaysia, Australia, Thailand, Singapore. The list goes on and on and on. And we got 40 new, on, or 40, I don't want to say new, some of them are pre-existing, but 40 on-demand liquidity payout corridors now available, folks. This is massive. This is big. Keep your eyes out. I'll be back. Wash your damn hands. Be nice and be kind to of each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out.